Yo, what's going on guys? How you doing? And in this video, I'm going to show you how to hire like a pro. I'm going to help you build a team that actually fits your barbershop culture, give you different methods and, and strategies to reach out to people, um, reach out to other barbers, reach out to other people in the industry, show you how to present yourself in the right manner to increase your productivity and obviously the chances of you getting more barbers to know you, like you and trust you so that they want to join your business. So what I've done is created this on-screen presentation for you. I'm going to run through it. And um, yeah, man, I'm definitely looking forward to getting started in this one. First and foremost, uh, this is a presentation I run to the guys in my group and one of my weekly training calls on a Monday night at 7 p.m. If you're in the group, let's go. Let's fucking get into these. And I'd love for you to join my community here. And so you can learn stuff like this. So um, one of the questions I had, what are the biggest issues uh, you guys face when hiring new team members. And I'm going to share with you some of the results that we got from our community. So problems when hiring, the first one was finding good cutters, but they're just shit people. So they're really great at cutting hair, but um, they're not, they haven't got a good attitude in the business. Second problem that we found when hiring in my community was great work ethic. So they're really good at wanting to work, but they're also um, lazy and unmotivated in their shit at what they do. The third person said to me, people not wanting to build your brand. So what they meant by this was literally, um, they want to come into your shop and build and have their own environment, their own rules, their own structure. And they don't want to help you build your brand as a whole. They don't want to become part of what you're doing, your movement. They want to come in and have the easy ride of not having to, you know, spend and invest into a shop not having to spend and invest into a team and a brand. They want to come in and use your platform to create their own brand, which is obviously not a good look. Generally, what you'll find is sometimes because it's so easy to do it, and I'm talking about this in the UK, in the UK, there's no laws or legislations. Anyone can open up a barbershop. So um, and I know it's different in the US and in Europe, but in the UK, um, it's very, very easy to open a shop. You could literally open a shop the next day, and pick up a pair of tools and start cutting hair. There's no, let's say there's no governing body that actually, you know, dictates a, a certain skill level, a certain hair requirement that you need to become a barber and open up a shop. So yeah, literally what we don't want to do, sorry, is we don't want to have people in the business who want to open their own shop because for obvious reasons, they're going to build a clientele on your platform. And then when they've got the money that they're going to be earning, they're going to go and take that money and go and open up shop and take your clients. So yeah, that's the next one. Third one is the fourth one is lazy people. Actually, what we do find a lot in the barber industry, barbers just show up, cut hair and go home. They've got no interest in, you know, just stupid stuff, man, like keeping the shop clean and tidy. M marketing themselves is, is like non-existent. They expect the, the owner of the business to do it or even worse. If they've got no clients, they'll just sit on their ass all day and scroll through social media, talk shit, mess about in the shop, be, become unprofessional. And um, yeah, man, it's tough when, I mean, I've worked with people like that in my life, in my whole career, and actually throughout my whole career. And um, yeah, man, that's they're the kind of tough people because if you work with these kind of people, they bring the whole vibe of the shop down and it's totally shit. The next thing is um, they come in with an ego. This is the kind of people we don't want to hire, definitely. So um, again, I've worked with people like this where people have come, I mean, keep in mind, by the way, I've got 51 team members in my team. I've got 14 shops based all around the world. And, um, you know, so this is why I can give you guys this advice because I mean, I'm pretty good at it doing that. I'm pretty, pretty good at building a team myself. Um, and basically this is probably the biggest one, to be honest, because if someone comes into your team with a huge ego it means that they think that they are better than the shop and the brand. You know, they might even come in with nothing. Maybe they've got a few thousand followers on IG, which means absolutely nothing. If you know anything about my training and they'll come in and they'll just absolutely destroy the culture of the shop because they override it with their shitty ego. Right. So how do we find the right people? We want to start by looking for a person that fits your culture of your business, but not your skill. Let me say that again. So you fully understand. We want to start by looking for a person that fits your culture, fits your brand, fits how you do things in your business. And then second, we hire for skill. Now, this is where most people get it wrong. What they do is they start by 
hire him for skill. They just want, you know, the best barber in the shop so that they can bang out good haircuts, which is great for short term. But then eventually that barber or the good barber that's in your shop cutting good hair, he'll eventually build the ego, become lazy and, you know, move on to the and fall into the category of those other things we were speaking about. But the number one thing we do is we definitely hire for culture within our business. Now, remember, this is why we hire for culture. It's because you can teach skills to a good person or a person that's good, but you can't teach a good, you can't teach somebody to be good even if they've got skills. So let me just make that clearer. So let's look at two people. One barber comes in, he's got a good attitude, but he's not so good at cutting hair. And then we, the person B is, he's great at cutting hair, but he's got a bad attitude. Which one would you want to work with? I would definitely want to work with person A. And the reason for that is because he's a great person. He probably fits the environment or he's willing to adjust to the culture of the shop. And I can teach him the skills to be a good barber. Now with person B, I can't teach him to be a good person. That's something I cannot do. I can give him a format. I can give him a structure. I can give him um, a, a path to walk down but I can't make him walk down that path. I can only open the door and see if he walks through. So yeah, that hopefully that explains that and clears that up why we hire for culture. And we definitely do not need to be hiring people with bad attitudes and good skills. We want to hire good people with good skills, preferably, but even if they've got bad skills, we hire for culture because we can teach them skills. Okay, look, now we know what kind of people we're looking to hire. Now we need to know where to find them. So again, we put this question to the group, my private barber community, the barberhood. We asked them, what places do you suggest to look when you start your hiring process? And here's what they come up with. The number one thing was they were looking on Indeed. Now Indeed is like a job site in the UK. So we could say Indeed here, if you're from the UK, if you're from the US or anywhere else, definitely what we should be doing is um, looking at other options. Um, like jobs.com or something like that. But yeah, any kind of job site, you can go onto there and look at a premium listing. You've got Facebook groups. There's tons and tons of barber Facebook groups that you can go in and make a post, but make sure that the post is correct. We'll talk about that in a little while. Um, barber schools and college. So if you can go into a college or a barber school, find a good person with a good attitude, but without the skills, and then invest a little bit of time into them, bring up their skills, and then they'll be a good barber for you to have in your business. You can go on Instagram. Um, literally, I showed one of my clients last just last week, he, he had one barber, and that was himself in the business with four more chairs. And he's just opened up the shop. And now he's literally a week later, he's got four barbers starting with him working cutting hair. So it's crazy. So I can show you that one ad if you join my program. Um, but yeah, there you go. There's There's a really good one that works really, really well. Um, Gumtree and Craigslist, um, they're kind of a similar thing. Um, I'm not sure if in the US there is a website called Gumtree. I know there's Craigslist. That's why I've listed it here. But um, Gumtree is a very similar thing to Craigslist and also Facebook Marketplace as well. You can look on there. Right. If you're going to look on social media, remember that you have to appeal to the barber's needs whilst displaying your culture at your shop. What you don't want to do is this when you're writing um, an ad or you're advertising a job. Because this is what I see all the time across all social media posts, Facebook, Instagram. People think that just writing an ad or putting a shitty picture on Instagram with very little information, very vague information like this is going to get somebody to want to come and work for you. Barber required, three years experience, busy London shop, good rates of pay. And then that's literally what they do. And that is absolutely shit. Um, right. What we need to do instead of that when we use social media here are three things that you can do right here, right now to increase the chances of you hiring a barber or attracting a barber to your profile or your platform and be invested in your culture in your shop. Number one, post consistently on social media. If the barber who is looking for a job, seeking um, for a place to come and work, comes across your social media and sees you consistently posting, that can build trust and value in that when they join your program, when they join your business, when they join your culture, when they join your family environment inside of your shop, 
that they know that you're going to be backing them up every single day or however often you're posting on social media, which is going to have a good influx of clients coming in. Number two is display your culture in your posts. So don't make every post you make about just cutting hair and how great you are at cutting hair. Make it about the environment in the shop. This is also great for attracting clients because clients, yeah, it's very important that they want to see um, how you cut hair and what your skills are looking like. But they also want to know, how am I going to feel when I'm in the shop? Um, you know, do you do anything outside of the business? Do you run community events? And then obviously the barber is going to be looking at the same kind of things because that's something that they're going to want to be included in. And you're looking for if somebody is a great barber and they want to come and fit your culture. They've Obviously, when you post stuff that you do outside of the business as a team, it's very, very important that the barber who you're trying to find also wants to come and join in on that because there's no point having a good barber in the shop. And then if you're a barber shop that has, you know, regular team meetings, uh, what go out once a week outside of the barber shop for team building exercises, you're going to want people who are in your team to be at those events. So just make sure that you consider that when you're posting. Um, number three is you can literally do this is a very good exercise, write a list of five things that you would like to see if you were looking for a barber job and then create content and run it as an ad to target barbers. By this, what I mean is like literally what we just said is write a list of five things that I would look what so so here what five things would I kind of look for if I'm a barber and I'm looking for a job obviously I'm not but you know number one would be that there's a regular flow of clients coming into the shop uh, the clock the shops advertising regularly um, like using social media ads not just you not know, relying on organic growth um, I would like to see also um, the team building exercises do they collaborate as a team and is there weekly team training could be number four because I want to enhance my skills and you know I constantly want to be learning and then number five um, I would want to know maybe a little bit of backstory about the team member so I could look into maybe creating posts based around each barber and their story and how they become a barber so that then I could see are these the kind of people I want to fit in with because I am going to be with these guys more than probably with my wife and my kids. So yeah, that was just a basic uh, rundown. Right. If you want to run ads on social media, um, I do have a higher funnel that you can use. Um, again, that's included in my program. And um, you can literally book a call with me down below if you're interested in doing that. Now, use my higher funnel on IG to run target ads on social media. That's number one. I would suggest that if you want to hire people for your culture and get the best results. This is the number one thing that I would suggest to do is run ads. And I've got a specific funnel for that inside of my program. Number two is then your fallback will be post on Facebook, post on Facebook groups, but make sure that you display the correct information and make the ad appealing to the barber, not to you. Don't speak about yourself. Don't talk about what you do and how great your shop is. Speak about the benefits of what you offer to the client, to, sorry, to the prospect of the barber who wants to join your business. Um, make everything about them, make the ad solely about them. You know, what does their workspace look like? How can they expect to work and, and what hours? How are they going to get paid? Um, what training can they expect? You know, we've just been through a couple of objections. Highlight those if you solve them problems for somebody looking for a job. Right, now we've discussed that. Let's talk about something to think about. And let me ask you guys a question. Leave it down in the comments below or write it on Slack if you're watching this in the community chat. What are the five most important factors to a barber when choosing a place to work? Let's write a list and then create content around those points to get barbers attracted to working for us. So if you're watching this video right now, you're either in my training or you're watching on YouTube and you are looking for a barber. You've probably spoken to me on IG and you've told me that you've got a problem that you can't find barbers, you don't know how to hire barbers, finding barbers is the worst problem that you've got. And if you could just find a barber that fits your business, then it would solve all of your problems. So literally, write down in the comments below, or send me a message on IG. If you're in my group, post it in our Slack community, guys. Um, and let's share some ideas. And then let's let's get this exercise into play. What are the five most important factors to a barber when choosing a place to work. We've just discussed a couple. I want you to write down your own and then start working on building content around them. Tag me in it if you're on IG. 
um, send them to me. If you've seen this video, let me know. I'm, I'm down to help out. I'd always love to hear anyone who's taking action on any of the exercises I put out there. Right, here are five that I'm going to give you anyway, but I don't want you to copy these. You can copy these, of course, but here's five that um, me and my community, have, we spoke about on our recent call, on our we recent weekly call. So here's five points to make. Um, number one is making sure that they are clients in the business. Number two is the earning potential of what each barber can make, the working environment and how it's set up for the barber to come in and enroll into the business, um, the career and freedom. So basically, are they going to be fully controlled or is there leniency in how they work, their hours, you know, what they charge and those kind of things. Um, and who are the work colleagues and culture? So it's very similar to the list I just mentioned a minute ago. Um, but yeah, take away from these what you want. I hope this video has been very, very informal for you. And I want to see everybody making a great standpoint of hiring better barbers for their business and hiring for their culture, not just hiring for skill. So let me ask you a question. What action will you take now? I want to ask everyone in the group or watching this video, comment on this video, what action you're going to take. Send me a message on Facebook or Instagram, any of the platforms that you've found this video on and literally um, put this into action and I hope that you hire better. If you are looking to hire right now, um, if you're looking for the exact strategies that I've used to help hire 51 barbers in my own team, also helped all of my clients hire multiple barbers in theirs and help them grow their business and make more money and allow them to step away from the barbershop so that their team can handle the business while they've got an incremental income and a passive income coming into their pocket, then you can book a call with me down below and I'll be willing to help you out. Yeah, so let me ask you this question. Um, anyone who's watching this video right now, let me know in the comments down below. Shoot me a message, a DM on any of the platforms. Or if you're in my barber community watching this in our course, then come into the Slack group and then write a post about what are you going to do now? Now you've watched this video. What have you learned? Um, what actions you're about to take? And tell me how you're going to hire better to fit your culture in your barbershop. If you are interested in hiring right now, if you're looking for help, guidance and support on hiring and creating and scaling a bigger team in your business, stepping away from the barber chair and having yourself set up as a business owner rather than an active barber slogging away behind a chair for hours every single day, every single week. And you just generally want to make more money in your business by hiring and scaling your team so that you can have more freedom and creativity by managing people and you want to help people and give opportunity, then what you can do right now is go ahead and book on the link down below. If you're already in my community, you're in my course already, then don't worry, we're already locked in and we've got you set up and you're you're smashing it already. But if you're watching this on YouTube or um, on some other platform and you're interested in having me be your coach, be your mentor, help you and guide you to help you create that freedom in your life, step away from the chair, um, get you into that business owner mindset and step away from being a barber and literally step back, make a passive income and then be able to scale from a bird's eye view of your business. Um, just book a call with me down below and definitely excited to speak to each and every one of you. Hope this has been valuable and guys, I'll see you guys in the next one.